Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're taking a look at the miniatures from Aliens, another glorious day in the core. You may have seen my unboxing video of Aliens. Um, I finally sat down and put together all of the models, and I thought I'd share that experience with you guys. I know that um, some people might be a little intimidated by the fact that you actually have to assemble your models for this game. Um, they don't come pre-assembled at all. And they are basically little model kits. But that said, they're pretty simple to assemble. The other thing I wanted to do was to also compare these miniatures to the previous um, Aliens property that I owned, which was uh, Aliens vs. Predator, which started as a Kickstarter from Protoss Games. So I do have a bunch of those miniatures that I'm going to compare first. But the first thing I want to do is talk about um, the aliens another day in the core miniature so these are all hard plastic so they're not the soft you know army man uh, you know plastic they're not resin or anything like that so these are hard plastic and that comes with its pros and cons you get 16 aliens and there are seven um, good guys five marines and um, Ripley and Newt so the um, again for a sixty dollar um, game box, you're getting a lot of miniatures. Now I didn't paint anyone except one. I, I was trying to find a way to paint an alien. But before we talk about painting, just the assembly process. Um, the good guys, the guys in green, are very easy to assemble. Um, they're probably the easiest because most of them are just um, two, maybe three parts the head and one of the arms and then you you know you attach it to the stand for example this is the Hudson miniature and it actually says Hudson on the back of the base which is very nice it does that for all of the characters so these are very very easy to assemble I think anyone could do that now the alien models are a little bit more complicated to assemble just because the pieces are a little bit more fiddly so there's more pieces the arms are separate, the tail separate, the body is uh, two halves, and you've got the head. So there, there's several more pieces than the marine models, but um, they they go to be, they go together pretty um, easily. One of the things that I learned is you want to keep track of which head goes with which body. There's four different body types um, because the heads match certain bodies, at least in my experience. So. I, I tried cutting out a bunch of you know all of the pieces beforehand and then just building and then I quickly realized that some of those heads match up with some of the bodies better than others so um, I don't know if the heads are meant to be mixed and matched like the arms and tails can be but ultimately it, it goes together fine so you see they're um, quite fiddly now I use plastic uh, cement and um, these guys are pretty um, sturdy now as I, I throw them they are um, you know just because of the way an alien looks they are a little awkward sometimes on the the table and storing them just because it's like playing a, a barrel of monkeys but i mean these are these aren't painted or else i probably wouldn't do it but you know i'm so sure of the glue and whatever that i, I don't mind doing this and it's kind of like a barrel of monkeys with these tails right <laughs> uh, so keep that in mind it's it's cool stuff the models are good quality they're they're gonna last um, and they look nice now I did try painting one of the aliens just because I'm looking for a paint scheme that is easy and I'll probably talk about uh, that more in the uh, what's on the table this week but you can see I kind of went with just uh, this is using contrast black uh, some light dry brushes of gray and then uh, a satin finish might pick out the teeth with silver I'm not sure yet but um, the problem with painting the aliens is just that they're they're mainly black particularly the ones from this aliens film you know maybe some some blue highlights from the environment but it's just a black model so even though I you know spent maybe 20 minutes painting this guy you know like that much different than this guy right plus this is a board game so I don't want to spend too much time painting these like I would a, a 40k or Flames of War army because, to be honest, this game's going to be played, you know, if I'm lucky, a couple times a year getting it out. 
So I don't necessarily want to invest the same amount of painting time that I would to a Flames of War or 40k army that might be played with, you know, two or three times a month. But that said, the models are really cool. Alright, so um, there you go. That's just a little talk about the models in the game, what they look like. Um, give you a better view now that they're assembled. But, like I said, I, I am really happy with these. So, I'm a big fan of Aliens. I love the movie. It's uh, one of my top five, probably, now movies of all time. And I was very excited with uh, the Alien vs. Predator Kickstarter, which was ultimately a massive <laughs> disappointment. But they came out with some exceptional miniatures. Now, I realize that they have a couple of versions of their miniatures. I think they had a second edition, but they, they lost me after the first edition. So this is an alien warrior from um, Protoss. Now, I've heard rumors that the, the sculptor of these is or was a Protoss sculptor. I don't know if that's true or not. If you guys know down in the comments below, uh, let me know. But... I mean, you're working off the same property, so these guys are very uh, similar in size. But I've got a bunch of these because of that Kickstarter, and I haven't sold them yet. And I'm probably not going to, but you can see that these guys are essentially the same size. I know he is in plain resin, but you can see... Comparing the two head to head, I would say that the um, the resin model is more detailed, um, and that's one of the advantages of working in resin. But obviously, resin models are going to be a lot more expensive than these these hard plastic ones, especially since you get 16 in the box for uh, 60 dollars. Now let's compare that to uh, 40k, if you will, if you were collecting Tyranids. Uh, and you wanted 16 Gaunts or Hormigaunts, something that would be somewhat similar to, to these guys, um, you'd probably pay well over $60 just for those models, not including the game or the Marines or anything like that. Um, for these Protoss models, though, I do like the fact that they there are some different poses. There's some low-crouching ones. they look pretty good. Um, whereas the ones for Gale Force 9 are from Gale Force 9, even though there are four different body types, they're all in essentially the same pose. And that's going to help uh, in gaming because you do have one inch squares, kind of like my mat here. So these are designed to fit right in there. But with the tails, it's hard to stack them without getting them all hung up on each other. So that's the uh, Protoss aliens. Now the Protoss uh, marines that I have um, are here. I, I started painting these guys, but I never really got around to finishing them. This was the one I got the closest to finishing. So I do want to paint my Gale Force 9 marines in a similar fashion. But, um, you know, this would be basically like the Hudson model. And he looks almost the same. He's almost in the same exact pose. The Protoss model is a little bit taller. This model, for example, is... Each one of these is... Squares is an inch, so that's about an inch and a half with the stand. And that is a little bit taller, but honestly, not you know, it's not without uh, you know, it's not outside of the normal variation of human sizes, right? This could just be a tall guy, and this could just be an average size guy. Um, what I would do is probably take them off this stand and mount them on these one inch stands so that they could fit on the game board. But it would be cool to have more than uh, the, the standard Marines for the game. One of the things you can do in the Gale Force 9 Aliens Another Day in the Core is you can equip, well, not Nooch, you can't take guns, but you can equip different weapons to these guys. So maybe in my bin, you know, if I give 
Hudson a flamethrower, maybe I can piece together another model that has an extra flamethrower, or if I give Vasquez a, a smart, uh, you know, as has a smart gun, give her a pulse rifle, um, maybe I could find a miniature that's close to that. So, it's pretty cool. But there you go, guys. That's just a quick look at the models from Aliens. Another glorious day in the core. I probably will be filming a battle report. I'm not sure if Jake will be able to participate or not, but since it's a co-op uh, game, you can play it single player and it shouldn't be any problem. So uh, you do have that to look forward to. I do want to play that. And I want to get these painted. I may or may not paint them before I do the the uh, the playthrough, the battle report for the game. Well, I'll have to see what my, you know, with Christmas coming up and all that stuff, time is a little bit tighter. But I'd like to do that, but if not, I'd just play with the pieces out of the, the game. So, there you go, guys. That's a look at the miniatures from Aliens, another glorious day in the core. Please do check us out on Facebook at All Miniatures Great and Small. You can also follow us on, on uh, YouTube, which you're, if you are, you're already here. I don't know why I said it that way. Uh, but we always appreciate a like and subscribe. Uh, you can also click that bell to receive notification for when we publish new content. As always, we appreciate you watching, guys. We can't do this without you. Keep on wargaming.